Hey guys, so I recently had a birthday and of course I decided to go bookstore shopping. Um, I had a lot of fun on my birthday. My sisters and I, we went bookstore hopping. Then for dinner, my family and I ate Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets, I made macaroni and cheese, carrot raisin salad, and bacon maple cupcakes for dessert. So it was all really delicious and really fun. Um, later on we played video games together and then we watched Dairy Devil, so it was pretty fun. I had a lot of fun, yeah. Onto the books. So the first one that I have here is Paper Towns by John Green. I have never read a John Green book before, but I've heard great things about them. Um, and this will probably be my first. Yeah, wait, can you see it well? There we go. Yeah, I got this one from Ollie's. You can still see the sticker. I have to take that off. It is more work than I thought it would be, but you know, hey. Quentin Jacobson has spent a lifetime loving the magnificent Margot Roth Spiegelman from afar. So when she cracks open a window and climbs back into his life, summoning him for an ingenious campaign of revenge, he follows. When their all-nighter ends and a new day breaks, Margot has disappeared, but Q soon learns that there are clues, and they are for him. Embarking on an exhilarating adventure to find her, the closer Q gets, the less he sees the girl he thought he knew. Um, I know there is a movie about this, but hopefully I can read this before I see the movie. The next book that I have is actually a collection of three books in one, and um, it's the Haunting Collection by Mary Downing Hand. Now these are ghost stories, children's ghost stories. I used to read these all the time when I was younger and I fell in love with them. So I saw this in the bookstore and I absolutely had to have it. I'm going to try to reread this so that I can see if I still feel the same way about them. You know, um, I really loved these so I'm hoping I still do. Mysterious disappearances, ghostly appearances, from the supernatural to the downright scary. These three spooky stories from the award-winning author Mary Downing Hand are sure to send shivers down readers' spines. Mysterious photographs, ghostly old houses, and all things supernatural await readers in these three frightful tales. You can see the three on the back. There's Deep and Dark and Dangerous, Wait Till Helen Comes, and All the Lovely Bad Ones. Yeah, I can't wait to read these again. I'm just really hoping I still feel the same way about them. So. The next book that I have is The City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. Um, this is the sixth book in the Mortal Instruments series. I am only three books in so far, but I'm super happy that I was able to pick this book up because I am planning on jumping back in, like, really soon. Um, these books are so fun to read and really addicting, and I really love this world. It's just so much fun. And so I'm super excited that I was able to find this book. Um, and for a great price. I got this from Ollie's for like $1.99. $1.99. That's pretty good. <sighs> okay. Next I have Shaman Warrior by Park Jin Gi, which is a graphic novel with amazing cover art. Yeah. Master Richard Yadong and his faithful servant Batu are sent to remote desert wastelands on a grave mission from their king. These two mysterious warriors have yet to realize that a whirlwind of political movements and secret plots will soon engulf them and change their lives forever. When Yarong is mortally injured, Batu must fulfill his promise to leave Yarong's side and protect his master's child. As Batu seeks to find and hide the infant, Yarong reveals another secret to those who have tracked him down to finish him off, the deadly, hidden power of a shaman warrior. Sounds really, really cool. Next I have The Bell at Silly Head and Odd Magic by Patricia A. McKillop. Now, these are fantasy novels. I haven't read anything by this author yet, although I do own quite a few of her books. I am on a mission to collect every book that she has written because these books have such beautiful cover art. I am in love with them. Um, I mean, of course I read the descriptions for them and all that, and they sound like they're really interesting, and they have great reviews. But, I mean, back to the cover art, look at that. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna read you the description for this one really quickly. Sealy Head is a small town on the edge of the ocean, a sleepy place. The prominent families in town are the Blairs, wealthy merchants, and the Sprules, gentlemen farmers. It might be possible just barely to count the Collies, who own the inn at Seely Head. Raven Sprule, who speaks of nothing but horses, is courting Gwyneth Blair. Gwyneth, who prefers to speak of books, fancies Jude Collie. Oh, I'm sorry, Jed Collie. On the outskirts of town is the one truly great house, Aislinn House where the aged Lady Eglantine lies dying in spite of everything that her doctor, her maid, and her maid's mother, the eccentric herbalist, can manage to do for her. All of them, and a few intriguing strangers, have a role to play in an ancient story of magic that will explain why at sunset everyone in Sealyhead hears the ringing of a bell no one can see. 
and why sometimes the doors at Aislinn House open not to its own dusty rooms, but to the wild majesty of a castle full of knights and princesses. And then odd magic. Huh, look at that. So beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's, these covers are really breathtaking. Brendan Vetch has a gift. With an innate sense he cannot explain to himself or describe to others, he is able to connect to the agricultural world, nurturing gardens to flourish and instinctively knowing the healing properties each plant and herb has to offer. But Brendan's gift isolates him from people and from becoming part of a community. Until the day he receives a personal invitation from the wizard Odd, she needs a gardener for her school in the great city Kellior, where every potential wizard must be trained to serve the kingdom of Numis. For decades, the rulers of Numis have controlled the school, believing they can contain the power within and punish any wizard who dares defy the law. But unknown to the reigning monarchy is the power possessed by the school's new gardener, a power that even Brendan isn't fully aware of, and which is the true reason Odd recruited him. And speaking of beautiful covers, I also picked up Tiger Tiger by Kirsten Hamilton, which I do love this cover. I think the colors are so pretty. Tegan Wilson's best friend, Abby, dreams that horrifying creatures, goblin shapeshifters, and beings of unearthly beauty but terrible cruelty are hunting Tegan. Abby is always coming up with crazy stuff, though, so Tegan isn't worried. Her life isn't in danger. In fact, it's perfect. She's on track for a college scholarship. She has a great job. She's focused on school, work, and her future. No boys, no heartaches, no problems. Until Finn, Matt, come hail arrives. Finn's a bit on the unearthly beautiful side himself. He has a killer accent and a knee-weakening smile. And either he's crazy or he's been haunting Abby's dreams because he's talking about goblins too and about being the Matt come hail, born to fight all goblin kind. Finn knows a thing or two about fighting which is a very good thing because this time Abby's right. The goblins are coming. Wow, okay. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. The next book that I have is The Sacred Lives of Men Bly by Stephanie Oakes. And honestly, I was kind of hesitant to buy this book, not because of the description. I mean, it sounds like it's gonna be really interesting, but because I have seen this art, this girl holding book in hands on a few other books by different authors and that's kind of a turnoff for me. I don't like it when authors or multiple authors use the same cover art for their books. I wish that people would just get their own original art because it really is a turnoff. But um, I know it shouldn't take away from the story, it just bothers me. The Kevin and Cult has taken everything from 17 year old Minnow, 12 years of her life, her family, her ability to trust. And when she rebelled, they took away her hands too. Now their prophet has been murdered and their camp set aflame. And it's clear that Minnow knows something about what happened that night. As she languishes in juvenile detention, she relives the events that led to her incarceration and struggles to unlearn everything she had been taught to believe. But when an FBI investigator approaches her about making a deal, Minnow sees she can have the freedom she's always dreamed of if she's willing to part with the terrible secrets of her past. It sounds really interesting. I'm excited to read this. Despite the unoriginal cover. Yeah. The next book that I have is All the Truth That's in Me by Julie Berry. Four years ago, Judith and her best friend disappeared from their small town of Roswell Station. Two years later, only Judith returned, permanently mutilated, reveled, and ignored by those who were once her friends and family. Unable to speak, Judith lives like a ghost in her own home, silently pouring out her thoughts to the only boy who's owned her heart as long as she can remember even if he doesn't know it, her childhood friend Lucas. But when Roswell Station is attacked, long buried secrets come to light, and Judith is forced to choose, continue to live in silence or recover her voice, even if it means changing her world and the lives around her forever. Then I have The Orphan Master's Son by Adam Johnson. Pak Jun Do is the haunted son of a lost mother, a singer stolen by Pyongyang, and an influential father who runs a work camp for orphans. Superiors in the North Korean state soon recognize the boy's loyalty and keen instincts. Considering himself a humble citizen of the greatest nation in the world, Jun Do rises in the ranks. He becomes a professional kidnapper who must navigate the shifting rules, arbitrary violence, and baffling demands of his overlords in order to stay alive. Driven to the absolute limit of what any human being could endure, he boldly takes on the treacherous role of rival to Kim Jong-il in an attempt to save the woman he loves, Sun Moon, a legendary actress so pure she didn't know what starving people looked like. This sounds like it's going to be really sad, but I don't know, I guess I'm still gonna read it. I just hope it doesn't mess me up too bad. The next book that I have is The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. Yeah. 
Mateo was not born. He was harvested. His DNA came from El Petron, lord of a country called Opium, a strip of poppy fields lying between the United States and what was once called Mexico. Matt's first cell split and divided inside a petri dish. Then he was placed in the womb of a cow, where he continued the miraculous journey from embryo to fetus to baby. He is a boy now, but most consider him a monster, except for El Petron. El Petron loves Matt as he loves himself, because Matt is himself. As Matt struggles to understand his existence, he is threatened by a sinister cast of characters, including El Petron's power-hungry family, and he is surrounded by a dangerous army of bodyguards. Escape is the only chance Matt has to survive, but escape from the Alacron, Alacran, Ala... Shoot. Okay, but escape from the Alacran estate is no guarantee of freedom because Matt is marked by his differences in ways he doesn't even suspect. Alacran, Alacran, Alacran. Oh, I probably said that wrong. I'm sorry. But yeah, you get the gist of it. <sighs> so, second to last, I have Shanghai Girls by Lisa C. In 1937, Shanghai is the Paris of Asia, a city of great wealth and glamour, the home of millionaires and beggars, gangsters and gamblers, patriots and revolutionaries, artists and warlords. Thanks to the financial security and material comforts provided by their father's prosperous rickshaw business, 21-year-old Pearl Chin and her younger sister, May, are having the time of their lives. Though both sisters wave off authority and tradition, they couldn't be more different. Pearl is a dragon sign, strong and stubborn, while May is a true sheep. <laughs> adorable and placid. Both are beautiful, modern and carefree, until the day their father tells them that he has gambled away their wealth and that in order to repay his debts, he must sell the girls as wives to suitors who have traveled from California to find Chinese brides. As Japanese bombs fall in their beloved city, Pearl and May set out on a journey of a lifetime, one that will take them through the Chinese countryside, in and out of the clutch of brutal soldiers, and across the Pacific to the shores of America. In Los Angeles, they begin a fresh chapter, trying to find love with the strangers they have married, brushing against the seduction of Hollywood and striving to embrace American life even as they fight against discrimination, brave communist wish hunts, and find themselves hemmed in by Chinatown's old ways and rules. And lastly, I have Winger by Andrew Smith, which you can't really see. Oh, there you go. Yep. Um, I heard that this book is pretty funny, so I'm super excited to read it because I like funny stories. Look at the art on the back, that is so funny. Ryan Dean West's life is complicated. He's a 14-year-old junior at Pine Mountain, a boarding school for rich kids. He's stuck rooming with the biggest drug on the rugby team in the dorm for miscreants and troublemakers. And he's totally in love with his best friend, Annie, who thinks of him as a little kid. As Ryan Dean tries to get a handle on school, life, and rugby, he finds himself muddling through a lot of decisions and making some major mistakes along the way. But nothing can prepare him for what comes next. And when the unthinkable happens, Ryan Dean has to find a way to hold on to the important things, no matter what. So, yeah, that was my book haul. Not as many as the last one, but pretty decent amount. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. <sighs> See you guys next time. <laughs>